This is a really sensitive topic, and I understand that it'll probably frustrate some people, but I think it's worth talking about, and I don't have this scripted. I'm just gonna give you my genuine, honest thoughts on this. And my goal here is not to specifically like rebut some article or go against somebody's statements or to like get into the nitty gritty of all the details of the situation, but more to talk on the overarching topics and I guess like how you fall in terms of this debate and this discussion and give you my two cents and why I think it's important to speak up about these things. So obviously based on the title, we've got this whole nonsensical Sweet Baby Inc. Gamergate 2.0, forced diversity in games, yada, yada, yada. I've seen a lot of videos, I've seen a lot of tweets, and I'm not going to specifically pull up screenshots of specific videos or specific tweets, but I've been honestly flabbergasted by how some people are just totally comfortable basically saying like, we only want to play as white people in games. And to me, that's just so insensitive, and I can't believe they feel so comfortable just saying it. Now, many of these people will say, no, no, we just don't want forced diversity. But what even is forced diversity? And I want to begin here because I think the entire argument that has built into a volcano is a, based on false pretenses, the entire argument is began and started over nonsense. And then there were so many other factors brought in and so many different like little branches to try and justify different... People were accusing Alan Wake 2 of intentionally including Saga, a black woman, as one of the main protagonists only because Sweet Baby Inc., a company that supposedly forces diversity onto AAA video games, forced Remedy to make one of their main characters a person of color. Well, that's what this is all based on, and that's where we got this whole idea that Sweet Baby Inc. forces diversity. Diversity shouldn't be forced in games. Japanese developers don't force diversity. It's just these woke American developers. Why are they doing this? We used to have games that had diversity but weren't forced. Again, what is forced diversity? Because if forced diversity is a company saying you must make this character a person of color, oops, it didn't happen. Remedy confirmed on Twitter very early on, back on March 4th, that this is absolutely not true that Saga Anderson was not put into Alan Wake or changed or, you know, conformed to anybody's notes or anybody's forcing or anybody's agenda. They made the character they wanted to make, and I believe that strongly because Remedy has always made the games they want to make. Remedy does not make games that target the typical popular genres. They do not make games that target the typical popular story beats. They make quirky, eclectic, Twin Peaks type titles that t typically underperform. They're not out here trying to win awards for the most sales. They're out here doing what they believe in and the games they want to make. And so if you were going to tell me that any studio was forced to do something, I surely would have Remedy on the bottom of my list. So let's let that be known, that the forced diversity that this all began about was not forced. So then people took it that Sweet Baby Inc. forces diversity on every game. They're in here just forcing, changing all the characters that were white men into women and into people of color and people of different sexual orientation and preference. And they're just, you know, mutating all of our games and making them terrible. Again, I ask you, what does it mean to have forced diversity? Because if your idea of forced diversity is that a game that you believe should be all people that look like you and now there's other people, that's not forced diversity. That means that you don't like diversity they are like i play games hundreds of them every year i've played games for 30 years okay i cannot think of a game where i was so bothered by something like this okay i play games for the gameplay and i think that most people should play games because they're great games and you should be able to be colorblind and gender blind to whatever the game you're playing it is a good game because it is a good game the story is intriguing because the story is intriguing. And if you're only able to enjoy a story, if it has people that are white or people that are men or people that are, you know, whatever, are you really a fan of the games? Or do you just have a very strong bias and you only want games to be made for you? Because look at the backwards nature of this argument. The forced diversity argument says that these people want games made for them and so they're forcing it upon us. But in reality, I believe that the people complaining about this actually just want games 
made to target their desires, made to target their preferences. And anything that challenges that or goes against that, well, that feels uncomfortable. And they're gonna label it forced because I don't understand what that phrase even means. Now, I have worked with a developer recently. I worked with Ascendant Studios on Immortals of Avium, a game that has been criticized before for being woke, and those developers were very excited and pumped to make their game well-rounded. They were not forcing diversity. They were not trying to only craft a story that could fit through all of these hoops. No, they just wanted to make a well-rounded game, and that's where I'm kind of getting to with this, which is well-rounded and inclusive to people is now forced. You know why it feels forced? Because it wasn't inclusive before. That should be the most logical one plus one equals two for you out there. Why does diversity feel forced to you? It's because it wasn't included in the past. It was not popular. I've seen a lot of people say, we used to have games all the time, and I, I love games that had lead women. I love games that lead people of color. I love this game that had this one thing. First of all, that's like a, a tried and true argument that does not work. Because you like this one game that had you know this one character of a different race, that does not mean that like now you get a, a free pass, first of all. And it does not mean that things are worse now or that they were great back then. I think it is undeniable that as time has progressed, we have gotten more inclusive and more evolved in that way. And so when people say games are woke now, what they're really saying is games are inclusive, games are kind, and games have evolved. But to them, they have devolved because they're going away from their personal biases, their personal preferences, and what they want. I saw a really heinous tweet from a former popular YouTuber who was saying like, target your consumer base. Most people that play games are white men. That's what the game should be. Now, gosh, so much wrong with that. But first of all, pretty much no matter what, most games are still going to be that. Do you realize how many games come out? And like, we have to throw out the ones where you're playing like a, a baby chicken or you're playing as like Bluey. Obviously those games exist and obviously they involve creatures and characters and IP. Outside of that, most games are still going to be targeting, for better or worse, the white male audience. That doesn't need to be said, and it definitely does not need to be doubled down on. We already target that, and even with diversity, and even with inclusion, we will still have that be the main thing. This like apocalyptic theory that one day all the games are going to be rid of white people and rid of males is just absurd and silly, and if anyone even insinuates that or says the gaming industry is being overrun or whatever, they're just factually wrong and all they're doing is revealing their biases. But again, let's go to a developer themselves because Sweet Baby Inc. supposedly forces diversity, they're terrible people, they're bad people, yada, yada, yada. Well, let's talk about Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2 is a game that does support inclusion and diversity. There are pride flags in the game in New York City. They've been criticized for that, and it probably was Sweet Baby Inc. that forced Insomniac and Sony to make that happen, right? They were trying to just make their Spider-Man game. Spider-Man, you know, he's not political. Spider-Man, he, you know, he just, he's just a white boy doing what he does. He's just living. He's just existing. And Sweet Baby Inc. came and forced this upon them. I mean, look, they made you have to play Miles Morales. They didn't. And none of it was forced or even about diversity. Let's start with Insomniac Games comments from narrative designer Mary Kenny. She's currently working on Wolverine, the upcoming and very leaked game that they are making after Spider-Man 2, saying it starts with dev team as an idea. Maybe they already have an outline of their story and a core gameplay loop. Maybe they've got a whole script and a playable build. Either way, something is missing. Could be any number of things. A character feels underbaked, maybe a whole faction. The backstory of a map has weak sauce world building and no one on the team has time to do the research and brainstorming to make it cool. They bring in Sweet Baby. And the team does do research, pitch ideas, give feedback, and maybe even write scripts and is additive in every way. If the developer disagrees with Sweet Baby on a specific matter, the dev team doesn't take the note. It really is that simple. Sure doesn't sound forced to me. Sure doesn't sound forced to me, but maybe Mary is lying. Maybe it really is forced and so she's making this up. Well, let's hear what Sweet Baby actually worked on within Spider-Man 2. Was it the pride flags in the game? It was not. They notably assisted on the main campaign's last sequences. None of it was related to diversity or anything like that. It was literally about what is the best Spider-Man story we can tell. Boom! Again, what this all began from and what this all builds from is false pretense and not even addressing what Sweet Baby Inc. actually does. Now, could there be some people that are bad seeds within this and are trying to like maliciously cause problems in the gaming industry? Sure. 
I'll believe it. I'm sure there are a few bad seeds out there that are working like to forward their own agenda and are working in a negative and or malicious way, but most of them are not. And most of what you hear is people just frustrated that they don't have games like they want, even though they do. And that's where I get so confused, and that's where I think it's so illuminating, these people speaking out against Sweet Baby Inc., speaking out against forced diversity is, dude, look at all the games. Look at all them that come out. You got plenty that cater to you. You got plenty, whether it's... Don't even get me started on like wanting the characters in games to be super mega crazy hot and sexualized, and you need it to be that way, and if it's not, it's woke. I mean, goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. But... Also, majority of these games are targeting that. There are plenty of scantily clad women in games. There are plenty of white dudes as main characters in games. There's plenty of box arts that are going to feature someone that you identify with. But that still doesn't stop you from saying that this is being overtaken, that there's forced diversity, that all these games are ruined, that Sweet Baby Inc. is coming in here and destroying the game industry. All it shows is that you're insensitive, not looking for inclusion, selfish, and honestly not really thinking things through. You're not looking at the logic of it. You're not reading the facts. You're not considering other people and caring about how they might feel. For me, like, I don't care who I play in a game. For some people that are underrepresented, it's very important to them. And I think we should absolutely have those opportunities. As Alan Wake's developer, Remedy, said, it was not forced. Saga is in there because she's a cool character and a great fit for that game. So trying to say that these games used to not force diversity, and now they are. How do you even know that, and how can you decide that? You're calling back on examples from yesteryear that, I guess, fit your straw man argument, and then looking at modern games because you can't make an impact on the past, but you could make an impact on the future by yelling and screaming because money does drive everything, and if there's enough hoopla around this stuff, maybe some developers will get scared but I encourage developers to not get scared. These people are louder than they seem, and I do believe that there is a large majority of very smart, very kind game players that are appreciative of inclusion and understand that an inclusive game is not a forced game, nor is it a worse game, nor is it something that takes away from the game itself. If you're able to play as Bluey in a game and enjoy it, okay, if you're able to play as a crazy aggro crab in a Dark Souls-like indie title coming to Switch next month, you can play as a woman, you can play as a person of a different race, it's still an awesome game. Nobody out here complaining that Ellie is in The Last of Us so darn much. It's all picking and choosing, it's all just being irrational, and it's honestly all just being a jerk. It's all just being unkind, and there's so much of that, at least it's so loud. It's so loud, and I, for me, it's frustrating. I find it frustrating that these people have such platforms, these people have such loud mouthed agendas and they will say that you're just not appreciative of our opinion too. Again, we've established that their opinion is based on false pretenses, illogical facts, and it's just not a reality. So when they say that their opinion is they want more games like they used to be and they want more games that represent them, well, there's tons of them. So this is not a matter of different opinions. This is not a matter of, oh, I'm not receptive to how you feel about it. It's how you feel about it is informed by your biases and you're letting that cloud everything and then trying to come up with these bad arguments to make it seem like your agenda is actually wholesome and just innocent. And I don't believe it is. Some people might be so confused or brainwashed by society that they think they have an honest argument, but if they were to sit down with a therapist and really break into it and really be honest and go through it, I think they would come out the other side realizing that, oops, my argument isn't what I actually thought it was. Maybe I just need to expand my horizons, open my eyes, and be a little kinder to the neighbors that live on this global planet with me in a global gaming industry that is not trying to target or suit one specific person at all, nor should it, but it still does cater to the popular demographic. As some people have pointed out, they're still getting plenty of their games. I think that just about sums it up. I really appreciate diversity and inclusion in games. I also don't play every game, and I also don't like or not like a game because of the race of the character, or what they look like, or how they sound, or what their sexual preference is. That does not decide a game for me. I have never, ever played a video game in my 34 years of life 
hundreds of games, thousands of review codes, so many awesome opportunities, and so much good fortune to get to test out so many titles. I've never played a game and said, I don't like this game because of the character's appearance or race or preferences. How can that affect your game if you don't have really bad intentions? How else would that bother you so greatly to deter your enjoyment of a game? Because for me, and I think for a lot of people that are more open to this, it has no impact. I had to cut myself off because I just went on and on kind of talking in circles and repeating these things because it's, like I said, it's flabbergasting and confusing and frustrating to me, but I'll end with this. Be kind to other people. Operate from what you do and what you say by trying to be a good neighbor and a kind friend to those that you meet. And check yourself on what you're saying and what you're thinking and if it fits in with that type of positive alignment. Maybe you don't care about positivity. Maybe you don't care about being kind to people. Maybe you just want to get what's yours and be selfish. And I guess then this video, you know, none of it has made any sort of mark for you. But ultimately, at the end of the day, we just got to be good to each other. And being good to each other would be being fine with anybody in any game. And being good to each other would be checking facts and seeing that, oh, Saga Anderson was not forced into Alan Wake 2. And nobody is forcing all sorts of crazy conspiracy diversity into your games and destroying them from the inside out. Uh, games are games and games have been games and developers make games and developers make all sorts of decisions along the way and they're trying to make the best games that they can. They're trying to make games that are successful. They're trying to make the games they want to make. If you want to make a game, be my guest and make a game. But man, just be kind to people. I think that's so hard for some so easy for others and it's the difference between a happy healthy planet and a miserable one i wish that there was more kindness and empathy out there that's all i try to promote and spread and create i will continue to do that i know many of you will as well and it's important to not get deterred distracted or downtrodden by some of the negativity out there some of the loud yelling obnoxious things that you feel like how could this even be a thought Stick to your values, stick to your beliefs. And if you're someone that is willing to open your mind, check yourself to see if what you think and believe is actually your honest thought and wholesome belief or are you being informed by something else. It's hard to evaluate ourselves. It's hard to look at ourselves and look in the mirror. I'm not a perfect person. I've gone to therapy and counseling and had to look at myself and change different ways about how I, how I operate, how I behave. Uh, how I you know, interact, and it's made me a better person. I think one of the best things you can do for yourself, for those around you, for those that you love and that love you, and for the world as a whole, is to look inward and see how you can maybe grow and improve. I like that the gaming industry is growing and improving. There's a lot of bad things going on right now with layoffs and shrinkage, uh, condensing, cancellations, delays, etc. but this is not a bad thing. More diversity, more inclusion is good. What is forced diversity? It's not a thing. That's to land on. Let me know your comments in that section down below. Thank you for listening and giving me an opportunity to speak on this. If you're frustrated or affected, that's okay. Um, I had to say what I wanted to say, and I think it's important to say that because, look, we need good people saying good things, and we need people to know that it's okay to say those things and that just being loud and bossy and dominant doesn't necessarily mean that that's the most popular theory or thought i'm still going to hold on to the belief that there are tons of good people that just don't want to go scream on the internet so thank you for watching stay safe stay healthy stay positive out there and until next time switch force out